Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. Who won day one of the no confidence motion in parliament? Was it the treasury bunches or was it the opposition? Who are the big guns who fired? What to expect tomorrow and the day after? All that and more on the biggest political story in India coming up on the news track tonight. The 72-hour no-trust war kicks off. <laughs> Team India takes on Team Modi. <laughs> Congress bowls Rahul Gugli. <laughs> Opener Rahul pulls back at last minute. Congress saving Rahul for final shot. Stage set for Rahul versus Modi showdown. Big focus on news track. The three-day no trust war kicked off in Parliament today. It was expected that Rahul Gandhi would be the opening batsman for Team India. But the Congress made a last-minute change in their batting order and held Rahul back to do the pinch hitting, instead sending Gaurav Gogai to open the innings. The Congress party sources are telling India today that the Congress would like to set up a Rahul versus Modi showdown. But the BJP doesn't want that to happen either. They've got one tail-ender batsman they want to squeeze in between Rahul Gandhi and the Prime Minister. So it doesn't seem like the Prime Minister is responding to Rahul Gandhi, but this one other BJP MP stroke minister will. So lots of games within games playing out in Parliament on this big story. Who won day one and why? We look at that. But first up, here is our lead story tonight. Optics, perception and strategy. महोदय मैं निम्नलिखित प्रस्ताव पेश करता हूं कि यह सभा मंत्री परिषद में विश्वास का भाव व्यक्त करती है इट्स नॉट राहुल गांधी लीडिंग द नो ट्रस्ट डिबेट अगेंस्ट द बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट अ डे आफ्टर ही मेड अ कमबैक टू द फ्लोर ऑफ द लोकसभा हिज नेम स्ट्रक थ्रू द लिस्ट ऑफ पार्टी स्पीकर्स सर हमारी मांग स्पष्ट थी कि देश के मुखिया होने के नाते प्रधानमंत्री सदन में आए अपनी बात रखे अपनी संवेदना प्रकट करे और उस पर सारे पार्टी समर्थन दे और मणिपुर को एक संदेश जाए कि इस दुख की घड़ी में पूरा सदन मणिपुर के साथ है हम मणिपुर में शांति चाहते हैं मणिपुर के छात्र कांग्रेस इंस्टेंट पिच टिट सेम पी गौरव गोगोई टू लीड दी चार्ज ऑन ट्यूजडे द लास्ट मिनट चेंज इवन बी वल गवर्नमेंट बेंचेस क्या हुआ सर हम तो राहुल गांधी जी के भाषण सुनने के लिए हम 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 उत्सुक है सर हम उत्सुक है राहुल गांधी का राहुल क्या हो गया इसे क्या द मूव इज कैलकुलेटेड अकॉर्डिंग टू कांग्रेस सोर्सेस इट्स पार्ट ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजिक गेम प्लान सो मेनी और जितने भी बड़ा और टेबल कर दूंगी सर द गांधी साइंस स्पीच ऑन द नो ट्रस्ट मोशन रिजर्व फॉर द डे व्हेन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वुड बी फिजिकली प्रेजेंट इन द लोकसभा Prime Minister Modi is expected to reply to the motion on August 10. Rahul Gandhi held back from speaking till the Prime Minister is seen in the house on or before August 10. Yeh hamara vishwas prastav hamari majboori hai. Congress appears to be meticulously crafting its narrative to showcase him as a formidable contender ready to take on the Prime Minister head on and position him as the principal figure of the 26 party India Alliance. Adding context to this political maneuvering, a Lok Niti CSDS survey in May showed Prime Minister Modi as the top choice for 43% of respondents if elections were held then. Nonetheless, Rahul Gandhi was seen narrowing the gap with 27% of votes in his favor, marking an increase of 4 percentage points since the 2019 survey and a significant 13-point rise since 2014. 15% of those respondents expressed the new found appreciation for the Congress leader after his Bharat Joro Yatra. Within the opposition ranks, Rahul Gandhi was seen garnering the maximum public support 
far ahead of several other regional satraps from the non-BJP parties. As the political landscape continues to evolve with the convergence of over two dozen opposition parties under one umbrella, the ongoing no-confidence debate is becoming a platform for making powerful political statements leading up to the 2024 electoral battle. Bureau Report, India Today. The BJP held back the likes of Smriti, Rani, Nirmala, Sitara, and some of whom were slated to talk today. Rahul Gandhi held back at least till tomorrow, probably till day after. But there was still quite a fiery face-off in Lok Sabha as the opening batsmen of both the opposition and the centre went out and struck their, uh, played their game and tried to set the match up for their teams. Here are some of the key highlights of the day's action in Parliament. सर हमारी मांग स्पष्ट थी कि देश के मुखिया होने के नाते प्रधानमंत्री सदन में आए अपनी बात रखें अपनी संवेदना प्रकट करें और उस पर सारे पार्टी समर्थन दे और मणिपुर को एक संदेश जाए कि इस दुख की घड़ी में पूरा सदन मणिपुर के साथ है हम मणिपुर में शांति चाहते हैं यह हमारी अपेक्षा थी यह हमारी अपेक्षा थी लेकिन अफसोस की बात है कि ऐसा नहीं हुआ प्रधानमंत्री महोदय ने एक मौन व्रत लिया कि सदन में ना लोकसभा में कुछ बोलेंगे ना राज्यसभा में कुछ बोलेंगे और इसीलिए अध्यक्ष महोदय ये नौबत आनी पड़ी कि हम अविश्वास प्रस्ताव के द्वारा प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी का मौन व्रत हम तोड़ना चाहते हैं सर साफ साफ तीन सवाल है प्रधानमंत्री महोदय से सवाल पहला कि आज तक वो मणिपुर क्यों नहीं गए राहुल जी गए इंडिया अलायंस के विभिन्न पार्टीज गए गृह मंत्री जी गए एमओएस होम गए पर देश के मुखिया होने के नाते प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी क्यों नहीं गए ये है सवाल पहला सवाल दूसरा कि लगभग 80 दिन क्यों लगे प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी को मणिपुर पे कुछ बोलने के लिए और जब बोले तो सिर्फ 30 सेकंड के लिए बोले और उसके पश्चात आज तक भी प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी की तरफ से ना कोई संवेदना का शब्द ना कोई शांति की याचना ये जो सवाल है सर ये आई एन डी आई ए की बात करते हैं मुझे तो मैं सोनिया जी का बहुत सम्मान करता हूं और ये जो आई एन डी आई ए बना है सर ये आई एन डी आई ए यहां जितने लोग सांसद बैठे हैं ना उनको रैंडम यदि आप पूछ लीजिए अपोजिशन वाले से कि आई एन डी आई ए का क्या फुल फॉर्म है शायद कुछ ही लोग होंगे जो बता पाएंगे और ये इंडिया इंडिया बात कर रहे हैं सर मैं तो मैं तो इस मणिपुर का जो है शुक्रगुजार हूं मणिपुर का शुक्रगुजार हूं जिसको अभी आपने डाटा सर दानिश अली को जिसको आपने डाटा भारत माता की जय कहने पर भी उसको लगता है कि ये बीजेपी का नारा है लेकिन मैं मणिपुर का शुक्रगुजार हूं कि जितना आ, इंडिया इंडिया जो है आजादी के बाद से कांग्रेस ने नहीं किया होगा उन्नीस के बाद से उतनी बार इंडिया इंडिया का यहां नारा लगा सर मैं आपका शुक्रगुजार हूं पार्लियामेंट टू इलेक्शन कमीशन मोदी नेवर कम्स टू अटेंड पार्लियामेंट ही हैज नॉट रिप्लाई टू अ सिंगल क्वेश्चन इन पार्लियामेंट आई हैव सीन मेनी अदर पार्लियामेंट्स आई हैव नेवर सीन अ मैन लाइक हिम हु हैज प्राइम मिनिस्टर डज नॉट अप्लाई रिप्लाई टू अ सिंगल क्वेश्चन He does not believe in parliamentary democracy. Next, I want to give you and in your medium, the citizens and the country, that when will it be taken? And in which situation will it be taken? Often, when the country has become such a political situation, where it seems that the government's population is less, उसमें कम हो जाते हैं या सरकार के पास वो ताकत नहीं रहते हैं देश को संचालित करने के लिए और नेतृत्व कमज़ोर हो जाते हैं 
कई परिस्थिति होते हैं तब अविश्वास का प्रस्ताव लाया जाता है लेकिन आज का जो अविश्वास प्रस्ताव लाए हैं कांग्रेस पार्टी मैं ये मानता हूं कि कांग्रेस पार्टी और विपक्ष के जो लोग हैं वो खुद ही बाद में पछताएंगे आई वॉन्ट टू टेल ऑन रिकॉर्ड दैट द ऑपोजिशन पार्टी विल रिग्रेट दैट दिस नो कॉन्फिडेंस मोशन इज ब्रॉड इन ए रॉन्ग टाइमिंग एन ए वेरी वेरी इन ए रॉन्ग so who won day 1 and why and what to expect on day 2 and then the grand finale on day 3 this is the biggest political story in the country at the moment and no one quite tracks politics in the way that india today really does to get a sense of what the different camps think about the political action as it played out on day 1 representing the ruling bharatiya janata party its spokesperson shahzad punawala squaring off against him mohan kumaramangalam from the congress party vishwajit deb uh, from the trinamool congress and rahul shrivastav our national affairs editor i want to go across to mohan kumaramangalam first because you put out an, a letter essentially suggesting that rahul gandhi would be opening batsman then you changed your mind gorav gogoi paired up came out to bat and i heard uh the bjp mp say maybe he didn't wake up on time which is why he didn't show up which is why you had to send somebody else to bat why didn't you tell our viewers what happened why have you held rahul gandhi back <laughs> well i'm not going to choose to comment on that snide remark by the bjp mp but i'll say that i'm not privy to our flow strategy i would if i would wager a guess i would say we're waiting for when the prime minister actually comes to the house he was also expected to be in the house today and he wasn't so my i you know my guess is that that would be the reason why mr gandhi hasn't spoken yet he wants to probably speak when the prime minister is actually in the house for the change for a change rahul shivastav the buzz that i picked up in parliament was that they want rahul gandhi to speak just before the prime minister but the bjp doesn't want to happen they want to insert one person mm-hmm. in so that whoever that person is whether it's a minister smriti irani she's the one countering rahul gandhi rather than it becoming rahul versus modi what are you picking up yes that uh, seems to be the strategy see initially it was loaded in a way that rahul gandhi the congress had approached the speaker mentioning that rahul gandhi would like to speak first why did they change their mind you think uh i think it was strategy uh, sudhir adiranjan choudhary says ki humne googli mara hai now googli has to score a wicket googli has to and in case of a no confidence motion this is a bo force which has been mounted to actually kill a fly But still if you are not bringing a government down you have to ensure emerge with numbers and with an perception agenda i think perception they can have because numbers it is going to be close to 360 that's good the majority be 34 of the uh, ysr cp and the bjd with the government and i think more likely the numbers is a different issue and the government will take that remember the no confidence motion is is agendaless who won according to you on day one why see day one i i have a theory rahul simple i'll put it on uh, at the table first I think they are trying to billet a Rahul Gandhi versus Narendra Modi. The Congress wants to make a grand show, and that's why they retracted. No, but that's a bit like Musk versus. Uh, they wanted to do it. Zuckerberg, but you know, but the point is that in every battle that's happened between Rahul and Modi in the past, Modi has won each and every time. So is that even smart also strategy? Also, the advantage a prime minister has no time-bound speech. Rahul Gandhi will have limited amount of time. prime minister replying to others can have endless time so in time matters also prime minister gets more space i think the congress made a mistake in this debate on specific manipur issues the bjp has to be a bit defensive it will like to broad base the debate on successes that's why nirmala sitaraman is there she will talk about the success of the economy nishikant's dubey speech was very little about manipur no but let me put that question it was about nishikant so dubey just one more line I think Rahul Gandhi should have spoken first posed potent questions BJP might not have had specific answers for two days till Prime Minister Modi spoke there would it would have got traction I think they actually made a mistake by speaking last what will happen on that same day first Smriti Rani will be inserted and then Prime Minister will speak in those three speeches which one will you choose more unless of course you think you got surya kumar yadav in your mates and he can hit everyone else out of the park but remember rahul gandhi is no surya kumar yadav or hasn't been so far and therefore just how much expectation can you have from him 
Shehzad Punawala, if you listen to Nishikant Dubey, who was the opening batsman for the BJP, it seemed like he had a full speech prepared to counter Rahul Gandhi. Except the subject changed in the end because he wasn't countering Rahul Gandhi all of a sudden, he had to counter Gaurav Gogoi. How do you think day one went for you? Uh, first of all, I think you should stop calling glorified night watchmen as opening batsmen. So, I think Rahul Gandhi is nothing Whoever more than Whoever opens the match, for good or for bad, he's an opening batsman. No, I think that what you were perceiving as an opening batsman, even the Congress has accepted that, first of all, forget no confidence against government. They have no confidence in Rahul. Because I think Rahul Srivastava is also right in another way. What he has not said, what I have understood, is that he will do self goal kar dega Rahul Baba. Not Rahul Kaval or Rahul Shivastav, so we will be clean for three days. And you can see Rahul Shivastav's muskurahat, mandamand muskurahati, he's saying a lot of things. So I think this is the first evidence that no confidence is against Rahul. Secondly, T.R. Balu spoke, Supriya Sule spoke, Dimpal Yadav spoke, apart from that uh, some other people spoke. Did they speak about Manipur? They were not at all serious about Manipur. Look at the extensive manner in which Kiran Rijuju has given the statement he's a minister of the government. And look at the kind of statements that were, that were being made by Supriya Sule. I'm sorry that I had to even be subjected to that. She's a member of parliament, but the manner in which she spoke or Dimple Yadav spoke, I think it is disservice and it also shows that lack of seriousness about the issue they were raising. And frankly, yesterday was the semi-final, no, Mr. Rahul. Yesterday was a semi-final. Today the final was taking place. The no, this opening is a batsman test did match. not come. This is a test match. No, no. Mr. It's Kejriwal called it a semi-final. Okay. Now nobody in the BJP is foolish to make these events as final semi-final. Mr. Kejriwal called it semi-final. Final ke din pe opening batsman hi nahi aaya. But I have a larger question to ask. First of all, what is this no confidence motion? This is the first no confidence motion in the history of Rahul Shivas and Rahul Kaval that is not being brought against the government. Ye ek dusre ke beech ka no confidence hai na Aam Admi Party versus okay. Congress, so that's the point. TMC the versus BJP. There no Bishwajit confidence is there. being done. And lastly, it is an exercise to build confidence in Rahul's leadership. This is no, the exercise you know, that is, is being is done that in the name of Manipur. Dev, from a Trinamool perspective, even the right idea, as you know, we look at day one, build up to day two, then day three, the Congress very clearly wants to make this Rahul versus Modi. Would Mamta Di want the same or do you think that could be a disaster? Because most Modi versus Rahul fights have ended just one way. You kind of already know who the winner is. At least so far that's been the case. Well, let me make it clear that irrespective of the outcome in a parliamentary system of democracy, this is the instrument to compel the Prime Minister to make his speech inside the House of the Parliament. We must hear the Prime Minister. We are not there to listen to the Home Minister. The Prime Minister has to address the nation on the issue of Manipur. It's a very serious issue where hundreds of people have lost their lives. He will, he will, he will on Thursday. You aren't answering my question. Arms are being brought from <coughs> abroad. Please, please, please let me, please let me finish. Arms are being brought from abroad. Arms are being brought from abroad. AK-47 is being used. The Manipur government has failed miserably. The union government has failed miserably. The entire state is in a mess. And there is every probability that this fire will spread to the other states of the Northeast. And we are very surprised that the Prime Minister has got no time either to visit Manipur or to make a statement inside the house. It's a shame. that it's almost it's like you didn't hear my question, so let me ask you again. Prime Minister of India okay, let me ask time. you again. You know, like a I lawyer, you're reading off from your prepared text. My question to you was, how did day one go? No, the Congress no, wants to make this Rahul versus no, Modi. Does Mamta Di think that's a good idea? Respond to my question, Dada. You, first of all, you must understand that it's an alliance. It's an India alliance. And we are all together. We need to fight out this particular autocratic government, if we need to save the country, if we need to save our motherland, if we need to save our constitution, we have to be together and we need to remove this particular government with the blessings of the people of India. Now coming to Manipur, this is a very core issue which the government is trying to avoid. The government is repeatedly trying to avoid. The Prime Minister has got time since 3rd of May. Okay, you're repeating what you said but not answering my question. My question, sir, was, judges. can you hear me, Vishwajit Da? Can you hear me, sir? My question is, how was day one? Congress wants to make this Rahul versus Modi. Does Mamta Banerjee think that's a good idea? You're not answering my question, Dada. I can't ask the same question again and again. You are, you are, you are trying, you are, you are, you are, you are trying to twist things. You are trying to twist the entire matter. You must understand that the parliament now 
has moved a no confidence motion. The opposition has moved a no confidence motion against the government. And the government has to reply. And it is the Prime Minister of okay. the nation. I have understood what you are saying. So, Bishwaji Dev is a good lawyer. He has come with the script. He said, doesn't matter what uh, the moderator says, I will go off on my talking points. But I want to go across to Mohan Kumar Mangalam. Because all the, there is an inherent risk in upping the ante and seeking to turn this into a Modi versus Rahul gladiatorial contest. Because each and every time Rahul Gandhi and Prime Minister Modi have gone head on head, this battle has ended just one way. Why then does the Congress want, you know, you saw how Bishwajit there, thrice I asked the same question, didn't even respond to it. They don't want to make this Rahul versus Modi even if they don't say it, they'd this much rather be Team India versus Prime Minister Modi and his government. You are looking to up the, the ante yeah. on Rahul. You no. think he's changed so post not... the Bharat Jodo Yatra, but every battle Modi versus Rahul had ended just one way so far. Rahul Srivastav ji made that excellent point where the Prime Minister often speaks last and has the maximum amount of time to speak. I still don't think he's won every battle. He has always managed to evade the questions placed to him. But thankfully, when they're placed by Mr. Rahul Gandhi, those questions go on record and become part of mainstream media. That in itself is a victory, I would say. You could argue who wins what debate. And what Shehzad Baba is not talking about is why the Prime Minister is running away from the debate till the very last day. It's been over 90 days and he refuses to talk about Manipur in the house. And Manipur is very much been the main reason why this has been brought. I think Gaurav Gugai's speech was excellent. It covered a whole range of issues about what's going on with Manipur. And even though Mr. Kiran Rijuju maybe spoke after four or five speakers after, you know, and Gaurav Gugai opened the, uh, the speeches, he wasn't able to respond to anything that Gaurav Gugai said in his speech. She says he that Kumar yeah. Manglam is asking, as are many other opposition leaders, mm -hmm. why doesn't the Prime Minister sit in the house and listen to what's being discussed? This is what you are asking, what Kumar Mangalam asked and what Mr. No, Lawyer, but respond Mr. to my question. I am uh, responding to your question, but I will also respond to the opposition's question. Mr. Dev and he both said that why isn't the Prime Minister speaking? In no confidence motion, can Prime Minister speak first? No, that's not uh, the question. The, the point. question is, the point is, is the lack of knowledge about the Shouldn't the Prime Minister, Minister of parliament? sit in Parliament no, and listen I'll, to what's being said? I'll come to that why also. I'll come to that house. also. No, I did not interrupt Mr. I can't answer three people at one time. I can answer one person one time. Let me answer in the way I decide. Secondly, uh, if there was so interested in a church on Manipur, Rahul Kawal and Rahul Srivastava, both of whom look at parliament very seriously, how come nine days the stand was, Prime Minister must speak on Manipur, else no allowing of any business in house, and then Delhi Services Bill, they change the stand? What is special about Delhi Services Bill, vis a vis the other bills that were passed in parliament, that they changed the stand, that Manipur par Pradhan Mantri pehle bole, that was their consistent stand, how come that changed only? At the time of Delhi Services Bill, that means their intention was never about Manipur. It was always about saving this so-called alliance, where Mr. Dev can't even say that whether Rahul Gandhi is their projected leader in this alliance, at least in Parliament, at least for this event of no conference motion. And finally, as far as Prime Minister's presence is concerned, the Prime Minister has to respond in the end to all. So he is taking note and cognizance of everything that is being said in the House. But I want to ask that why is it that Rahul Gandhi was not put forward as was being said by Congress leaders that he is going to be the opening no, so Is it because they are shy that Rahul Gandhi would have made such a big gaffe that because of that gaffe then three days they would have to only cover up for the gaffe. Or secondly, please tell me now the other speakers, Saugata Roy, T.R. Balu, Supriya Sule, Dimpal Yadav, how much of their time was devoted on Manipur? Please tell me. You are telling me Prime Minister should speak on Manipur. Please tell me how much time the honourable leaders okay. of opposition were devoting to Manipur. And thirdly, I am asking a very direct question. Kiran Rijuju has asked on record and maybe the Congress spokesperson can answer. We have five sitting ministers from the Northeast. You tell me how many ministers you made between 2004 to 14. Let's talk about the incidents that used to take place. The incidents of uh, insurgency have come down by 80%. The civilian deaths have come down by 90%. The number of railways, airports have doubled in the last nine years. Yes, there are many things that need to be sorted out in Manipur. It is not a one-day affair. It is a legacy issue we are dealing with. But you tell me if you are serious about it, why did you not allow parliament to function for nine days and then change your stand for Delhi Services Bill? How committed are you to the cause of Manipur? You are not committed. You said 267 by Charcha. Okay. Okay. Vishwaji Dev wants to come in. Also. Vishwaji Dev wants Shah to respond yesterday. to Shahzad Purawala. Go ahead, yes, Vishwaji. Yes. I, 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 want to, I, want to, I want to ask, I want to ask Mr. Purawala that why in Rajya Sabha the chairman is not allowing a debate under Rule 267? Why Manipur is not being discussed for a long duration? This because this is a very serious issue. Why the government is shying out? Why the government is trying to avoid? 
a discussion on Manipur. Why the Prime Minister is not coming inside the house? He has made a statement for only 30 seconds and that too outside the house. He, he doesn't have any time for Manipur. Why okay. is that? L because let me ask that question Manipur to Rahul Shrivastava. Only two Lok Sabha seats. Only two, so two Lok Sabha seats. Whereas, whereas in Bengal, he Can has I time to come question, several times. Because Bengal has 42 Lok Sabha seats. This is the difference. This is the difference because they don't consider Manipur to be a part of India. Okay, very quickly. Uh, very quickly, if their intention was Manipur is the only important issue that needs to be discussed, please tell me that a no-confidence motion is a motion against the entire government on which a whole range of issues can be discussed, technically, constitutionally speaking. Why did they go for that? And why did they change their stand on Delhi services bill? Okay, Rahul why Shivastav, are they answering that question? How, what is can I, can the I, best I, response that you've picked up about why the Prime Minister is not in the House listening to the debate because the argument I heard from the BJP in parliament is even if he's there and if the opposition leader is just going to heckle and abuse him, then there's no point in him sitting there. They say that he's sitting in his cabin, listening very carefully and taking notes and will respond when his turn comes. See, what I've, I have noticed, I have noticed that times when you're in parliament, that we are told that prime minister is listening to a debate. That's one thing is very clear. But not inside that the That he house. listens, not inside the See, most of the major debates he's there, but I have not seen a prime minister sit through the entire debates. It doesn't happen. It never happened in the not past. Not really. Week. It doesn't happen. So that's that an prime unfair minister... expectation. No, I think what is happening is that there's definitely, given the kind of issues where the opposition feels that the prime minister should speak, Modi is... Say, I have done a uh, write-up on this, that Manmohan Singh spoke on several occasions. I think it's a tendency now that a Prime Minister who has lesser authority or lesser numbers is more inclined to speak in Parliament. Somebody who has a majority has got speaking directly to the public, doesn't feel very inclined to speak Which in Parliament. Which is a strange Parliament. thing because what comes out from the data, Shahzad, is that Prime Minister Modi has actually spoken on fewer occasions in Parliament than Manmohan Singh. 30 versus 70. In, in the years that they've been in power, uh, who would have thought that Prime Minister Modi would be speaking lesser than uh, Manmohan Singh? Uh, I think that that comparison that you have made, first of all, you need to see who was more effective and who was speaking for himself. So let us also understand that Manmohan Singh was hardly speaking for himself. No, and most says. of the times the speaking was being done or ordinances were being torn outside by people who are not even in government. So who had the authority when they were speaking in parliament? Secondly, what is the question today? The question is that if they wanted a serious debate on Manipur, I have asked the two gentlemen Let time me put and again, that question to why is it that they compromise the stand on Delhi services why, issue? Why is it that such little time, if this is so much about Manipur, why is it that such little so time then, is spent by the likes of Shugot Roy, Dimpal Yadav, uh, Supriya Sule, in their speech actually talking about Manipur. So I'll say uh, that I saw pretty much the entire day's proceedings. Um, I think uh, Supriya Sule ji was very conscious, uh, and even though she doesn't belong to my party, and I'm not speaking for her, but I, as an observer, I would say she was very conscious about not repeating many of the points that were made by speakers before her. And when you're putting the government on the mat in a no-confidence motion, yes, one of the primary issues we're going to discuss is Manipur. But there is a whole range of uh, reasons why we believe this government has lost confidence of the people. And therefore, it was important for her. And she did put forth very, very good arguments on inflation, on the, um, the erosion of many of the institutions. And I think she made, she made a good speech. And if you look at some of the other speakers, uh, you know, like Mr. Gaurav Gugai, who opened, he spoke almost exclusively about Manipur. He covered a huge range of issues, right from the increase in the number of acres of poppy fields to someone in their own government in Manipur actually going ahead and, uh, you know, allowing the release of one of the drug peddlers who was caught there. He was related to one of the ministers in the Manipur government. He talked about how 5,000 arms have been stolen from the armories. And these are arms that you would go to war with, like, you know, light machine guns or big rifles, grenades. So he covered a huge range of issues in Manipur. I think a majority okay. of the Rahul Shivasta, what should viewers like expect said, tomorrow? We know that there's <laughs> Home Minister Amit Shah speaking. A lot of his focus will be on Manipur. He's been itching for an opportunity to speak in Parliament and explain to the people of India what he's done, what the government has done. Is that the big highlight? Yes, what else? Amit Shah is going to be a big one because I believe the opposition wasted one day of debate. If Manipur was the focus on which they wanted, to paint a Prime Minister Narendra Modi's door, failed Prime Minister. That's what the idea is. Rahul, be very clear, that's the only idea. The opposition has been itching. It was itching in 2018, 
चौकीदार चोर है इमर्ज फ्रॉम द डिबेट दैट हग एंड विंक इमर्ज फ्रॉम द डिबेट टू सेट द परसेप्शन एजेंडा फेल्ड अगेन द आइडिया इज दिस डेफिनेटली द कांग्रेस इज अ बीट राहुल गांधी इज डूइंग बेटर द आइडिया इज अगेन टू राइट ऑन प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी इज डोर फेल्ड बट यू हैव वेस्टेड वन डे If you want to build a narrative, where is Manipur today? Am I going back home with several questions on Manipur that the government failed? The uh, government, the opposition has not yet done it. Tomorrow, Amit Shah will come and give a huge, a strong explanation. I'm not saying we agree with it, but he will give his side of the story. No, and Eventually, there's a lot that can be said. For example, in 1993, in 1995, each time on Kumara Mangalam there was a riot. In the past, now that will be part of. Uh, the home minister's speech. M- many more people died than currently, and in parliament there were many short discussions. And the response at that time was from the minister of state for home affairs, Rajesh Pilot. Here, the home minister has spoken in the no confidence motion. The prime minister will speak. So there are points that the home minister will attack the past performance of the Congress government's by. Let's hear him out. I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to say. I want to make one point, uh, Rao, not in response to what you're asking me, but what in response to Shahzad said in the beginning, which is that this was actually nothing more than a test of the opposition's uh, alliance. And I have to say, we already tested the opposition alliance with the Delhi Ordinance Act, so there was no need to bring this about. The other question he's asked yeah, repeatedly is why I didn't it actually point. allow for there to be a debate on the Delhi Ordinance Act? Well, frankly, the no confidence motion had already been called, and while even talking about the Delhi Ordinance Act, and there were a couple of other bills that passed without debate, there was no way we were going to let this pass without debate. And even while talking about it, we said that it is unprecedented that any government okay. is allowing for debate uh, well, or passing you know. of bills while a no confidence motion has been scheduled. Normally, this never happens in Parliament. But then, okay, so we let's talk, spend a moment any talking bills? about the grand finale, day three. Prime Minister Modi's response in conclusion to this debate, and before that, Rahul Gandhi. Now, whether he's the speaker just before or a little before that, because the BJP may want to bring somebody in. How does that get decided? Let's assume that Rahul Gandhi speaks. Can the Congress try and set up the order in a way that he's the penultimate speaker before the Prime Minister, or does the BJP have the prerogative to choose the order and insert someone like Ashmiti Rani? See, this is open. This is not necessary. Who decides this? The treasury benches can decide who is going to end the debate and who is going to speak after whom. The opposition does not. A list has to be submitted. Now, eventually, on that day list, if there is Rahul Gandhi's name, the BJP can always insert a name. He, the opposition cannot choose that Rahul Gandhi will speak the last after the treasury benches because that choice also has to be made. So the government can insert. Why Shashi Tharoor not on that list? He's arguably. See, I, I have a feeling. That since uh, Congress has only 51 members of Parliament, it has a certain two-hour time, and if they give too many Congress speakers, there will be little no, time. No, but they have a list of many more than those who have spoken. Yeah. So surely, on merit, Mohan Kumar Mangalam, someone like a Shashi Tharoor should have been on that list, unless, of course, uh, Congress is still holding a grudge against him for standing for the Congress President's election. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tharoor made a very eloquent speech in the Delhi Ordinance Act debate. He was the leading the debate spoken. for the party. No, but he should have spoken on the, the no confidence motion. Well, that would be your opinion. I assume the party made a decision after it gave him the debate to lead the debate on Delhi Ordinance Act that he wouldn't speak in this debate. They probably giving some other people a chance. Rahul, uh, may I now just come in very quickly? Look, it is clear and evident as daylight that their intention wasn't to have a full fleshed out debate on Manipur. Their entire agenda is how to project Rahul Gandhi as the best leader in the pack of the so-called opposition alliance that has been built. And therefore, they are looking how is at that? timing. Uh, One second, no, no, no. I did not interrupt. No, no. Rahul, how is I that? How is that? No, no, come on. Rahul, I should at least get my opportunity to speak. He's interrupting. Mohan, Rahul, let, let's be fair. Let I have speak. not interrupted. I'll come back not to you for a counter. In the middle. Let All me right, make okay, my point. How is it affecting you? I am getting right. an opportunity only in three rounds once and there also you are interrupting me. So let me speak my mind. The fact of the matter is that the very if, if they were concerned about Manipur, today they would have devoted maximum amount of time on Manipur. They did not. They would have said what have they done in the past. They used to lay statements, not even have a short discussion. The MOS laid a statement at the time when there was the largest amount of killings in Manipur and when there was the largest band in Manipur. 
Also, apart from that, the fact of the matter is that when should Rahul Gandhi speak so that he gets maximum mileage? And now politically, that might be all right. But the fact is that this is not about principles at all. They were saying, no, 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 on principle issue, we want Narendra Modi to be, uh, uh, to be held accountable for this. And therefore, we are holding this no confidence motion. We don't have the numbers. So what happened about that? And as far as your opposition unity is concerned, you got 102. We got 131 in what you were describing as the semi-final. So I think, that, and after that, Mr. Sandeep Dixit and a whole range of Congress leaders have attacked Arvind Kejriwal. So let us not get into the opposition unity bit. The fact is that this is a confidence building exercise for Rahul Gandhi and his capabilities are very short and therefore the Congress no, party is embarrassed to post him forward ultimately before the, the voters time. will decide because that's Rahul most Rahul important. No. Yes, more very I, quickly. I, you know, no, no, I just have to say I love the fact that this entire debate has been made uh, by Shehzad about Rahul Gandhi attacking him from the get-go. It just shows how, how terrified they are of his growing image. No, you Rahul Kawal made it about that. I have better no, things actually, to discuss. Actually, no, one second. Rahul Kawal said Kavan Kavan debate. I don't. You read this wrong. No, 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 no can I can I say you read can this I, wrong? Because it is actually in the BJP's estimate to their advantage. The more this becomes Modi versus Rahul, the more they think they benefit. The more it is Modi versus Team India, I don't India, think I'm reading it wrong, Rahul. No. All I'm seeing is him trying to attack Rahul Gandhi without talking, you know, about the merits of anyone else's arguments, and him coming up with some sort of trumped-up charge that we're trying to make this debate entirely about okay. Rahul Gandhi, which isn't the case at all. I, I want to walk across and show you some, uh, you know, data sets compiled by the India Today Data Intelligence Unit, which are viraling across social media to give you a sense of some of the context in. Uh, in what we are seeing in parliament. So I'll start by showing you where the two alliances stand at this moment and how things have moved. So basically, uh, we're expecting that in 335 is the starting point of the ND alliance. You can add to this the BJD and the YSRCP uh, MPs and 144 is where India stands at this moment. Let's just uh, move to the next one. It will show you how vote percentages have moved. Uh, if you add up all the NDA alliance uh, partners uh, and the UPA alliance partners, you see that the UPA is at 27, the NDA at 37. So there's a 10 percent gap still. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the parties that are involved and uh, their vote share. So eight, 18 parties in the NDA, 26 in the UPA uh, and a lot of smaller parties joining the NDA as well. So taking the number up. So the NDA may have a more, more number of parties in terms of the sheer number of parties that are part of the NDA, but actual parties on the ground with a strong performance there, the UPA seems to score higher. Let's take a look at uh, the close contest, uh, the battles uh, from the 2019 elections, which were won by a margin of less than 5% of the votes. Uh, the BJP won 41 of those, the Congress 19, others 37 and this map gives you a visual representation of where most of those battles are. If you see in the west, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, most of the battles were clear decisive victories for uh, the BJP. A lot of the closer battles are battles in states like Bihar, in states like West Bengal, in states like Orissa, in states like uh, Andhra Pradesh, that is where some of the closer battles have taken place. Those are the seats. Why we've looked at seats less than 5% uh, gap between the winner and losers because those are the seats where the battle is likely to be most fierce, most closely contested. Let's take a look at how long trust votes have typically gone on for. So if you see, the longest trust vote was in 1964, which went on for six days. The discussion went on for six days. The first one uh, in 1963, when uh, Pandit Nehru was Prime Minister, went on for four days. Typically, it's been about two and a half days. Uh, that's the typical duration of the discussion. Uh, but some interesting trivia in this timeline representation of how long each of these trust votes went on for. How will we decide, uh, Rahul, who won and to what extent? As far as the numbers are concerned, the numbers very clearly and very strongly with uh, the BJP. What will Mohan Kumar Manglam and the Congress try and take away? How will they try and prove that this no confidence motion actually serves some purpose? See, given the indication with Rahul Gandhi likely to speak on the last day, it seems that all the eggs have been put into Rahul Gandhi basket. It's totally up to Rahul Gandhi. 
So Shehzad may be right in a way that they are only trying to fix a battle, corner Prime Minister Narendra Modi and fix a summit battle between the Is two. Is that a good idea? I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea primarily because that not only, I will not comment on whether it is good vis-a-vis -vis Modi versus Rahul, who wins. I think it is problematic vis-a-vis -vis India also. Because the high-hanging fruit in the India coalition is the fact they don't want to agree on a prime ministerial face. Anybody becoming the big brother or the big leader in the coalition will create jitters. And it is something that they have been trying to postpone, Rahul. Two meetings, they have not even decided a convener. They may not fight elections together in most of the states. There might be no seat sharing. In a coalition where one-upmanship can be a problem, if Rahul Gandhi, to revive the Congress, sets up a battle, becomes the big brother in the coalition, there can be problems. So I think it can be a good thing for Congress, but for the coalition, which they're trying to represent today, it can become a problem. No, and the fact that the Congress has attempted so often Mohan Kumaramangalam to reinvent Rahul Gandhi and failed each time, they seem to think now, because of the Bharat Jodo Yatra, because he's just been uh, reinstated as a member of parliament, that this time will be different. But if you look at the eloquence, the public speaking skills of both these contenders, Rahul Gandhi, very likely on day three, has a very uphill task against him. I mean, I don't know, judge one way or the other, but he really does have a very uphill task against him. Do you want to put him under so much pressure? I think he'll rise to the occasion as he always has in the past. And I also will say that you think he's failed, but your numbers say otherwise. If I go by the numbers you're quoting from your Lokniti CSTS survey, which shows that after Bharat There's still Jodo a big Yatra, gap. He, is, he was losing is, with a massive margin. Now he's losing with a slightly yes, less massive Rahul. margin, but yes, a massive Rahul. margin if you nonetheless. Let me finish, if you let me finish, Rahul, what I'm saying is that we are about 10 months away from parliament. Every day things matter. So trajectory is what matters more than anything else. Yes, there is a gap. I'm not denying it. But I'm telling you that in terms of trajectory, he's making strides every day. Shahzad, Surya Kumar Yadav was dismissed as a failed batsman. The Congress thinks Rahul Gandhi can do a Surya Kumar Yadav, come back from the dead yeah. and show yeah. that he's uh, King Kong. Whether Rahul Gandhi turns out to be Surya Kumar Yadav or he turns out to be a night watchman, it's not our issue. Our issue is that we have a star batsman in the form of Narendra Modi. Now, please ask Mr. Dev whether he agrees with Mr. Mohan Kumaraswamy, whether that Rahul Gandhi is the rising oh, star Jesus, of the alliance. My name, it is, is. Is, it, is, it, is it acceptable to Mr. Kumar, uh, Mr. Dev that it's not Mamta Banerjee, it is not Akhilesh Yadav, it is not anybody else, Bishwaji but it is only Rahul Gandhi. You, know, you because are Mr. not answering Mr. my Mohan question about has with his statements Punawala. confirmed that no Mr. other leader Punawala. can match you, up. You, only Rahul. Yes, yes Vishwaji. Sir, we, I feel sorry for have, you. We have, we have categorically explained this. We have categorically explained this, that this is an issue to be decided after the elections are over, <laughs> after we defeat Mr. Narendra Modi and his NDA, then the 26 parties of the India Alliance will sit together But and you tell that to Congress, why are you telling me? That has been made okay. very clear. So now, tell now Congress. To, now, now, now Say you to, tell Congress, why are you telling me? I am not involved in your issue. alliance that, matters. That, 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 the house, that, the, that, the, that the house was not being allowed to function by the opposition, that's not a fact. It is the government, it is the ruling party which did not allow the house to function. Can I ask a question? Okay, I'm out of time. One more question. Ten seconds. I'm out of time. Mr. Dave, Mr. Dave, Mr. Dave, Mr. Dave, just on administrative experience, does Mamta Banerjee have more experience than Rahul? Does Mamta Banerjee, just on administrative experience, have more experience than Rahul? Of course, The opposition parties. The opposition parties. can't even answer for Mamta Didi. Okay, I'm out of time. We will have a day two and we will have a day three. You have not allowed. You have not allowed. Tomorrow? The opposition to raise their voices. So you have two days to raise your voice and say what you will and let the people of India judge what they think of what the government is saying, what they think of what the opposition is saying. We will track this political debate as best as we can. I want to thank our guests for joining us. The Congress thinks that Rahul Gandhi is more credible than he has been since 2014. And post the Bharat Jodo Yatra and post his reinstatement, they think he has more political chops than he has so far. But remember, he's up against the most dominating politician of this generation. Can he 
punch hard enough to land blows or will uh, Prime Minister Modi just decimate everything in his wake once he comes and bats last. We will track that very closely. The showdown over news portal News Click has escalated after claiming that the Congress had a China link. Uh, the BJP is now alleging that left leader Prakash Karat is involved in this scandal. Emails accessed uh, by India Today reporters show the website News Click was asked to defend China on COVID and push Beijing's propaganda during the border clashes. Munish Pandey with these details. <laughs> India Today unravels Congress-China link. A day after the government lashed out at the Congress and news website NewsClick, email exchanges have now emerged showing how Chinese propagandists were in direct touch with media in India. This is billionaire Neville Roy Singham, who's been accused of Chinese propaganda, emailing NewsClick director Prabir Purkhayas and CPM leaders like Prakash Karat with a Praise China Toolkit. Sources tell India Today these email exchanges occurred during significant periods, including the early days of the COVID outbreak, during farmer protests in India, and the persisting border tensions between India and China. The way these emails were structured, it clearly reveals a clear inclination towards promoting Chinese propaganda. The email conversations recorded by the enforcement directorate during the searches not only talk about how to keep China in a good light as far as its pandemic handling is concerned, but it also talks about some of the sensitive issues like India-China border. But the most important part is the email conversation with CPIM leader Prakash Karat and the Bharti Janta Party has not only targeted opposition over this, but they have also raised this matter before the parliament. Not just that, in stunning revelation, emails also talk about collaborations of the Indian communists with the Chinese. Sources say Prakash Karat expressed his satisfaction with the Chinese peace, despite knowing anti-China sentiments. यदि News Click का नाम यदि delete या restore हो गया, Congress को क्या समस्या सर? News Click आपका कौन लगता है? Purkast का नाम यदि restore हो गया, Purkast आपका क्या लगता है? Prakash Karat साहब, उनका पूरा का पूरा mail, मैं on record आपको लाना चाहता हूँ कि जो वो Neveli Rai Singham था. उसके साथ उनके हजारों मेल हैं और जब आप कहेंगे मैं ऑन रिकॉर्ड उसको पेश कर दूंगा सर द गवर्नमेंट हैज नाउ शॉपेंड इट्स अटैक ऑन द कांग्रेस कांग्रेस का हाथ न्यूज क्लिक के साथ कम्युनिस्ट बाकी दल ये भी उनका सहयोग करते रहे लेकिन कांग्रेस का हाथ न्यूज क्लिक के साथ न्यूज क्लिक के ऊपर चाइना का हाथ तो किसका हाथ कहां-कहां मिला है सबको समझ आता है कल जो है सर न्यूज़ क्लिक के ऊपर बड़ा हंगामा हुआ। The Congress meanwhile has strongly objected to the comment made by the BJP leaders, calling them defamatory and demanding that the allegations made by Nishikant Dubey in Parliament must be expunged. The mic of a particular BJP member, Mr. Dubey, was switched on and he proceeded to speak, and his sound was the only one coming through the translation headsets and through the uh, uh, the record of the house in which he levelled defamatory and libelous accusations against our party and by name two of its leaders. He cannot do so without giving notice in advance and getting the consent of the Speaker, which he had not done. With more and more evidence emerging of the China news click nexus to peddle Xi propaganda, the political fight is also heating up. With Munish Pandey in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. This is where I wrap up the news track tonight. We'll track day two of what happens in Parliament all through the day, live across the India Today network. I look forward to seeing you at 8pm tomorrow. Goodbye. Good night.